from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through him, and without him nothing came to be. What came to be through him was life, and this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him, but the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by a man's decision, but of God. And the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we saw his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, saying, this was he of whom I said, the one who is coming after me ranks ahead of me because he existed before me. From his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace. Because while the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. <coughs> No one has ever seen God. The only Son, God, who is at the Father's side, has revealed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I spoke of, of silence the other day. And it's... Um, essential for us to understand the relationship between the silence of God and we are made in the image of God and the Word of God, Jesus Christ, and we are made in the image and likeness of the Word of God. And so to hear the Word of God we need silence and the silence serves as a humble servant, serves the word that God speaks. And this word of God, John says in this beginning of his gospel, he was in the beginning with God, right in the beginning. So we hear in Genesis, God spoke at the very beginning, uh, the word that God spoke was Christ. And then this great mystery that the word became flesh and lived among us, the incarnation. And this is the uh, place where this took place. And again, uh, we need faith 
and faith is one with a sense of wonder. Nothing is more precious to man. You could say the deepest part of our being is a sense of wonder. Because where there is a sense of wonder, not only our mind uh, can know this wonder, but our heart, and not only our heart, but our spirit, and our spirit is the highest part of us that has the wonderful capacity for receiving the Holy Spirit of God. Our spirit can be united with the Holy Spirit of God. And that's what Jesus came to bring about, that as he was united, his divine nature was united with his human nature. So our human spirit has this wonderful power of being able to be united with the Holy Spirit of God himself and so taken up into the whole life of the Trinity. But John says, we saw his glory. The word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth and we saw his glory that we is, is the we of the apostles uh, the we of the church we saw his glory that is the witness um, that John gives and he speaks of the witness that John the Baptist gave You remember John the Baptist uh, said, Behold the Lamb of God. Uh, to John the Baptist was given to see the fulfillment of all the prophecies about the Lamb, the Lamb of Exodus, the Lamb that Isaiah prophesied of. And, and John's eye, John the Baptist in this case, we have John the Baptist, of course, and John the Apostle. And, and first John the Baptist's eyes were opened to see this, this great mystery of God becoming man. God, the Son, who had always lived with the Father, who eternally is one with the Father. Then God became man, the Word became flesh. And then when Jesus, when the Word become flesh, then speaks the Word what reverence we should have, what, uh, what love, what self-giving. Uh, if God speaks, if God has become man, then it should follow spontaneously that through the awakening of our spirit to that faith, then nothing else should compare with that. Nothing. We... we our whole being cries out to give ourselves entirely to him and to his will um, in adoration from our heart, not simply what we ought to do. And, and this grace, of course, um, is given every time we are offered the opportunity of faith, whenever the word becomes flesh in the Mass, then this same mystery is not only offered up to God in sacrifice, but is given to share. We eat his flesh and drink his blood. This is the whole meaning of uh, St. John's Gospel that begins with the word was made flesh and then reaches this point right in the middle of his Gospel where he gives his, his flesh and his blood for us as eternal life, as himself, as this love. Um, so let us thank God for the opportunity of having, as it were, an, a, an additional um, <coughs> help, a help to us to bring us to our knees, to love God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our strength, 
uh, coming on this pilgrimage can help us very much to do that. Uh, but of course it's not confined to that as if before we came here the Holy Spirit hasn't been telling us that all our lives. He has. And when we return he's not less with us of course. So we need to be faithful to what he gives in times of grace and I suppose this pilgrimage is a, is a time of, of, of special grace and uh, during it we need to uh, remember to be faithful to it, to remember to be faithful to the silence which is given to us as this precious gift uh, when we return from to, to wherever we came from this precious word that is given to us uh, wherever we are on the earth as long as our life on this earth lasts his word is speaking his love his forgiveness and his call to love God with all our heart with all our mind with all our soul with all our strength 